Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description. Allah says, we put a problem in your life in order for you to get closer to us because we saw that you were going far away and we love you so much. We wanted to tap you to say, hey, 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 you better come back, come back. But you're not coming. So Allah says, well, we are going to put for you a challenge in your life, your health, your family, your business, perhaps something will go wrong until you come crying to us and say, oh, Allah, forgive me. I have done wrong. Help me through my problem. Allah says, continue to call out to Allah until the day we grant you that reprieve or that ease. So Allah doesn't solve it immediately most of the time. Why? Because he loves you. He wants to keep you there. I know people who get up for Salat tahajjud and they said it started off with a problem where we had a major issue in our lives and we couldn't solve it. So we got up for tahajjud and when we got up, we cried to Allah to solve our problem and Allah did not solve it instantly, but we continued to cry. The day the problem got solved, we already got used to getting up for this prayer. By that time, I'm awake. I'd rather come and pray for Allah. Was that not a sign of the love of Allah? So Allah says, call out to me, call out to me for everything and anything. Don't underestimate it. You have to, you must make dua always. It's a very powerful tool, no matter what. Do you know what Allah says? I told you guidance. Allah says, all of you are astray except those whom we chose to guide. So ask us for the guidance. We will guide you. The same Hadith Qudsi says, Ya Ibadi, O my worshippers, O my slaves, Allah is addressing us. Kullukum arin illa man kasawtuhu fastaksuni aksukum. All of you are unclothed except those whom we have clothed. So ask me to clothe you, to grant you clothing, a covering, to grant you goodness. Allah has covered all the bad and what we show people is all good. You know that covering is from Allah. Imagine I'm standing in front of you. You cannot see my sins. You are sitting in front of me. I cannot see your sins. Why? It's the favor of Allah upon you and I. If we had our sins written on our foreheads, no one would want to look at us. But Allah says, no man, you are my slave, my worshiper. My relationship with you is a personal one. You call out to me. You ask me, I will cover you. I will clothe you. You appear beautiful. You appear good. So develop a connection with me. That's what Allah is saying. Allah covers. Imagine how merciful Allah is. Ya man satar al qabih wa dhahar al jameel. Oh you, referring to Allah. Oh you who has covered that which is not good and only shown that which is good. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. Allah is the only one who judges you based on your repentance. People will judge you based on your sin. You did something wrong 10 years ago. The whole community will remember it. They were there to see it. They saw it. They heard about it. They talk about it. But they were not there to see you crying in Tawbah to Allah. How do they know? You're probably closer to Allah than they are. That's why I don't judge people like this. You were there to witness the sin. You were not there to witness the repentance. Be careful when you talk about the sins of others in a way that is called backbiting. Don't. You become worse than them. Because why? You are scoffing and mocking at someone who must have already engaged in Tawbah and sought the forgiveness of Allah. They became pure. They became good. And where are we? We're still talking about them 10 years later. May Allah forgive us. Allah says, Ya Ibadi, Oh my worshippers, oh my slaves, all of you have no food besides those whom I have granted food to. All of you are hungry besides those I have, I have fed. So ask me to feed you and I will feed you. What's the point of this hadith? Call out to Allah. Remember Allah is the owner of everything. He owns you. He owns you and I. If he owns me, surely he owns everything that I own. That I think I own at least. Temporary ownership of this world. I can say this phone is mine. This clothing is mine. This headgear is mine. In actual fact, all of that belongs to Allah. I found it on earth. I'm going to leave it on earth. When I depart, guess what? I'm taking nothing with me. The only thing I'm taking is my good deeds. 
The only thing you are taking is your good deeds. So just like you want to see your bank balance become bigger and bigger and bigger, you should want to see your balance of good deeds become bigger and bigger and bigger. You know when a person is young and you give them their first amount, say for example, 20 kwacha. Oh, they're excited. You can buy sweets, can't you? 20 kwacha is quite a bit of money these days. When I was young, we used to laugh at the kwacha. Now the kwacha laughs at us. Mashallah, you know what I'm talking about, right? 20 kwacha, you can buy something. I'm sure you can buy a few things to eat, some chocolate maybe and this and that. The youngster gets excited, then he grows a bit older. You can't give him 20 anymore. You've got to give him 200, agreed. He's a bit older. And then you've got to give at a certain point, the guy's got married, you want to give him a gift. It's got to be 2000, agreed or not? What happened? You see the zeros, they are going more and more, you see. The zeros, they are becoming more and more. Then the guy has a bank account. When you have a bank account initially and you have 2000 in the bank, what are you concentrating on? Wallahi, I tell you, it's a human thing. You're concentrating more on the zeros than anything else. You want to see where the comma is. That's more important. Then you grow older and you start getting 20s of thousands. You are more worried that for as long as the two is there at the beginning and there's a zero with a comma, I know I'm in the 20s. As you become wealthier, you start looking at 200. Okay, for as long as there's a two before that decimal, I'm still okay. Then you go into the millions, you no longer look at the small figures. The, the, the tens and the hundreds and the thousands don't apply to you. For as long as that million is still there, I know I'm a wealthy person. Then you become in the 20s and, and 30s of millions. And then what happens? You just look at that figure. This is man. Trust me, those who are wealthy from amongst us, they know what I'm talking about. Even if you're not wealthy, you know exactly what I'm saying. As you grow, you start concentrating on different figures. Why am I saying this? It's true. I am saying this because just like you concentrate on figures and not the small ones, but the bigger ones, concentrate on how many deeds you have packed away. For the sake of Allah, every single day, ask yourself today, what did I do? Did I do my five daily prayers? Yes. Did, was I charitable? Was I kind? Did I hurt somebody's feelings? Did I backbite about someone? If that's the case, you paid tax. You paid an amount from your deeds. They are gone to someone else. So don't do that. Don't underestimate the loss you will suffer if you hurt someone, you abuse them, you deceive them. You have backbitten about them. The loss you suffer is tremendous. Why would you want to do so many deeds and it's going to go to a person perhaps you don't get along with simply because you made their life difficult. Make life easy. Allah makes life easy for you. Have mercy upon those on earth and Allah will have mercy on you. Have mercy on other people. Allah will have mercy on you. Have mercy on the animals and those that are creatures of Allah and Allah will grant you forgiveness and Jannah. He has already done it to others. If mercy to animals will get you in paradise, what do you think mercy to human beings will get you? My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you some problems so that you come closer to him, so that you ask him, you make dua to him, you become regular to your prayers. And when Allah loves someone, he tests them. Sometime when everything is working in your life, you are enjoying the wealth, the family, the vacations, the business, the job, whatever it is, and you forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the most important thing. No matter what, you cannot forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This dunya is deceiving you. The time is finishing. Every year you are celebrating your birthdays. It means you are getting one step closer to your death. So turn towards Allah. When Allah gives you problems, you become regular to your prayers. You pray tahajjud. You cry to Allah. You seek forgiveness. You ask Allah and you pray to Allah. Allah loves that. Allah loves your tears. So when everything is good, build your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strengthen your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't miss your salah. 
Don't miss your Quran. Don't miss the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you if your time is going bad. So always remember Allah and always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves to hear from you. And remember, don't harm others. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't deceive others. These are bad qualities. Remove the bad qualities from your life. And bring good habits. Enjoy good habits. Give salam to people. Give gifts to people. Smile to people. Be kind. Be nice. Be gentle towards people. And make people happy. And do sadaqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give barakah in your life. Allah will increase in your sustenance. And Allah will make things easy for you. And always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase in you. Allah will give barakah in your life. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description.